In the previous video, we saw how to create a base map for using in MapMate. We're now going to go on to add our species dots over the base map. And to do this, we need to go back to the File menu, New Map, and choose the Atlas wizard. In MapMate terminology, an atlas is always a set of maps, one map per species, that will show the records you have for each individual species. So we click on Atlas Wizard, and we now have a set of choices that we need to make about what we want the atlas to show. The first thing to choose is which group of species you want to map. So we'll go for the vascular plants. And then the set of records that you want to use to show on your map. And we'll go for Vice County 22. We now need to choose the base map that we're going to show the records over. And since we're looking at Vice County 22 records, we should choose the Vice County 22 base map. If you've created your base map and called it Base Map with a capital B and a capital M, it should appear in this list. If for any reason it doesn't appear in the list here, you can click on the Preview button and you'll then get taken through to another dialogue where you can choose to look at all the maps on your copy of MapMate and you may be able to find it that way. But as I say, as long as you've named it in the normal way, it should be in this list straight away. And we can choose it here, Vice County 22 base map. Choice number three is simply to decide how you want the titles to appear above each map for each species. So you can choose to have the scientific name, scientific name followed by the English name, or the other way around. The code options don't really work very well for the plants because the codes that are associated with the plant names are not actually in taxonomic order. So um, it's probably not a very helpful option to use the code for plant maps, but you can obviously choose whichever one you wish. I'm going to go for scientific followed by the English name, which means that my maps will appear in alphabetical order by the scientific name. The next set of choices are to do with how the dots are actually going to appear on the map. The first thing to choose is the size of the dot. And for instance, if you choose a 10 kilometer dot, then every record that has been located to 10 kilometer level or better will be dotted and shown on the map. Um, if you choose the one kilometer dots, and you have some 2 km square records in your database, then obviously the 2 km records cannot be shown at 1 km level, but anything at 1 km or better will be shown. So you can choose which to use here. If you choose the absolute option, then that will put a cross on the map at the precise point to which each grid reference refers. So if you have a variety of grid references from 2 kilometers, 1 kilometers down to 8 figure or 10 figure grid references, then you'll get a little cross for each different type of grid reference. At county level, for most purposes, the 2 km square seems to work best for tetrad mapping, so we'll choose that one. The next one is simply to say what shape you want your dot to be. Um, so I'll just choose one of those. The number here, normally you don't need to change this. What it's actually telling you is that the dot that it's going to draw on your map will be 1600 meters to represent each two kilometer square. In other words, there's going to be some white space around every dot. You can adjust this if you wish, and for instance, if you make this 2,000 metres, you'll find that all your dots join up with no space between them. But for most purposes, you can leave it at the number that MapMate gives you. And finally, in this section, if you click on the black box here, you can choose to make your dots a different colour. So let's go for Plum. Finally, MapMate has, as usual, created a name based on all the choices that you've made so far. But, as always, you can change this name if you wish, and it, it, with the uh, vascular plants and microspecies filter, it comes out with a rather long name. So I'm just going to, in fact, delete a few of the words just to simplify things. And having done that, we can click on OK. It now comes up with a rather confusing message. What this is asking you is whether you want to create an atlas that has a map or a page for every single species on the British list, or just for those species for which you have records in your database. 
For most purposes, you'll probably only want to create maps for species that you actually have records of. I suppose the main exception to that would be that if you're just setting up your MapMate database and haven't yet started entering data, then you might wish to have the complete set of maps ready and waiting for dots to be added to them as you add the data. Um, but you can always rebuild your atlas to add in species at a later stage. So most of the time, most people would, I think, click on No. And if you do that, you'll just get maps for the species you have records for. So MapMate runs through various operations and produces a map with some dots on it. It's not immediately obvious how you can see all the species that are in your atlas. And in fact, what you have to do is to go to this rather anonymous looking little black drop down arrow. And if you click on there, it opens up the list of what MapMate calls features, which in this case are actually the species that for which you have records and for which there are going to be dots on your map. And you just tick next to one of these and the map will change to that species. And um, you can scroll up and down the list and it will produce um, a map for that species. As you can see, I don't have very many plant records on this particular copy of MapMate, but the ones that are there are on the map. The other way that you can find species in this list is if you hover over the feature list and right click, you have an option to find a feature and you can just type in all or part of a plant name in there and tell it to find the first one that it can and it will find that. You can then cancel that and go straight to that particular record. So that's a quite quick and simple way to create a dot map or an atlas map as MapMate calls it for all the species that you have records for. As soon as you have an atlas map on your system, you can use MapMate to actually check the data behind these dots. If you click and drag a square across one or even a whole selection of dots on a map, let go of the mouse button and then go to Trace, what MapMate does is to list all the records that are sitting behind the dot or dots that you've chosen. And from here, of course, you can go back and see the original data entry screen and get all the full details for the particular record. If you just click anywhere on the map, there's some other options that may be useful. You can zoom in and make the, obviously make the background map larger and zoom into a particular area of it. And having done that, you can then either zoom out one at a time, or if you go for Restore, it will take you back to the original map. Having created your Atlas map, you'll find that every time you add a new record to your database, the dot will automatically appear on the maps for the species that you've already set up. However, if you record a species that you've not had on your database previously, you'll find that the Atlas does not automatically produce a map for each new species. So if you have added a new species, what you need to do is to go to the File menu and click on Rebuild. And as the message tells you, this is now going to get rid of the existing map and just recreate it. And it will then take you back to this dialog box about whether you want to include a map for every species on the list or just the ones you have records for. So click on No again for the ones that you have records for. But it will update itself with any new species that you've been added since the map was last created. The other option on that file list to reload simply refreshes the on-screen view of the map and it doesn't actually force it to include any new species. So it's the rebuild that you need to do to get the new species into your atlas. So that's it for creating a basic atlas map. There's quite a lot more things you can do to customise these maps once you set up the basic ones and we'll see some of that in the following videos.